Oh, I think we're live. Crap. Okay, welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York. Let me get the mic closer. Where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. Now, I had a ge very general question again. How to put a lien on a property. So you have to understand what that means. What's a lien? And what does it mean putting it on a property? So a lien is a... Hmm, how do you describe a lien? Is a legal obligation that gets filed with a local county um, that requires the owner of that property if they were to sell it or if they want to be lien free to pay it off so in the most obvious example of a lien is a mortgage which is called a deed of trust in some states it's called a mortgage deed of trust in other states in new york we call it a mortgage and that is a lien so the way it works when you borrow money what, what people call getting a mortgage is you borrow money there is a note which says uh, you owe three hundred thousand dollars at six percent interest payable over 15 or 30 years and then there is a mortgage filed that is a lien on the property where if you don't follow the terms of the note they can uh they can foreclose on the property due to you not following the terms of the loan that's what the lien says there are other types of liens so if you don't pay uh federal taxes you have a federal tax lien and they put that on any property that's affiliated with you now again these things are put there simply saying hey we know one day the property is going to have to be sold right unless theoretically you keep the property for a million years um most liens just sit there until you want to sell a property a mortgage lien is different because it's specific that if you don't follow the terms they can foreclose there are other places uh what the hell is that that noise oh there are other liens where you can foreclose but in general a lien is just something that's that's filed against the property so how do you file a lien? so why would you even want to file a lien so in a lot of creative financing that goes on you want to file a lien right there's not a lot of creative financing in new york right because subject to basically doesn't work in new york spoken about that a hundred times um and seller financing where you're the bank doesn't really work in new york because it takes it could take 12 15 years to foreclose but if you want to do some sort of other creative financing where you're going to put a lien on the property for example let's say you would buy the property the seller will finance it to you no that's not a good example the truth is it, it, in general it's used when you're the bank right so it happens a lot in the other 49 states where you you can be the bank in a state like texas where if you have to foreclose it takes 40 days you want to file a lien on the property to protect yourself right i'm doing a deal now that's a big mess and the, one of my partners is saying we should put a lien on it and i'm like i don't care i want the deed i want to get ownership of the property and then uh the people living there I, I don't want to bother with the foreclosure process i just want to uh if they don't do what they say they're going to do i would uh, try to evict them hopefully when the moratorium ends but but a lien is is usually some kind of thing that you owe so another type of lien is a mechanics lien right so if you are a licensed a plumber electrician contractor and somebody doesn't pay you you can put a mechanics lien on a property now again that doesn't give you the right to foreclose on the property but it says that someday you should get paid also uh, very often with a lien when it gets filed interest starts accruing oh crap and um sorry so when interest starts accruing the lien goes up which which is an incentive for whoever the lien is placed on to pay off the lien sooner instead of waiting for when he sells the property in 10 years so i had a case recently where i put a very large deposit down on a very expensive house in the hamptons and then i realized it was a title issue and i said i want my deposit back and they refused to give my deposit back and then they ended up selling the house to somebody else and still didn't give my deposit back so i sued them for the deposit back and this was a six-figure deposit and i won i was shocked thought i might lose but we won so what the court said is file a judgment and we're entitled to, to interest we had the, it had been going through the courts for about a year it's pretty quick considering maybe two years and um file a judgment and i can collect interest back to the day that we gave the money so that though the, i had two options my first option is contact the other side and say just send me the send me the money back all of it today or i'm going to file a judgment put a lien on on the I can't put on the property I got to own the property or I'm going to file a judgment against you for the property for the for the entire amount plus interest for two years so he they chose to just send us the money and we got the money back that day so that was good in fact that was great but the point is that a judgment can become a lien so another example is I, this happens to me all the time you I, I file a I sue a tenant for eviction and for non-payment right so they don't they owe me money right they owe me a few thousand dollars and the judge finds in my favor to evict them and the monetary judgment for three thousand dollars 
so they give me a judgment. I have to then go get a transcript of judgment, then I have to go to the county clerk and file that transcript of judgment so that it becomes an official lien that I can go collect, right? And then how you collect is even more complicated. And also how you go get tenants out is complicated. You have to get the sheriff to get them out. So you get a warrant for possession and a judgment for a monetary judgment. By the way, I've never collected on any of those judgments because most people just don't have any assets. But you can do that. It's probably not even smart anymore. The truth is I don't even want to bother with monetary judgments. It's, but I use it as a tool for... I use it as a tool to get people out. So what happens all, well, I don't want to give away all my secrets, but the point is you have to follow this lien. So it has to be followed with the county clerk and you have to have some reason to file a lien. You have to, you can't just, I can't just be John Smith and file a lien against some rich guy in my neighborhood. I have to have a reason that the court has to order it. And then I'll put that lien on unless you're a mechanic, in which case you have a very, very easy time to put a lien on a property, which sometimes sucks because very often, I'll tell you what happens a lot is you're a homeowner and you pay your general contractor. General contractor doesn't pay a subcontractor, right? doesn't pay a plumber, doesn't pay an uh, electrician. Plumber and electrician just puts a lien on your property. And you're like, what the hell are you putting a lien on my property for? I paid, I paid for it. And he's like, well, I didn't get paid, and that's there for you have to pay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So that happens a lot, and more than you know, which is why you got these really good general contractors don't screw you over like that. So um, basically, that's how you place a lien. It has to be filed with the local county. Another very common one is small claims court. You go to small claims court, which is, I think, under 3,000 in my county. <clears throat> you, win a, you win a summary judgment. It happens all the time. You sue somebody. They don't show up. Judge says, find your favor. Then you get a judgment against them, which you can turn into a lien. That, again, collecting on liens is, is a whole other topic and not easy to do. I told you I, I've had no luck with it. I've probably gotten 15 or 16 monetary judgments never collected any money. But in general, most of my time, I just wanted to get the tenants out. Um, but it's hard to collect. But if they do have uh, income, assets, you can get a sheriff to collect from them. Uh, you can hire companies that will find their assets and put and, and collect from them. Um, but the lien itself is just... I, I wonder... They really should... One second. How do you define lien? I should know how to basic definition of lien, right? As long as you know something, you just can't describe it clearly. Uh, definition of lien... A right to keep possession of property belonging to another person until the debt owed by that person is discharged. Interesting. I guess that's a good definition, right? You, so you, it's always because you owe somebody money, right? Federal tax liens because you owe the government money. Mortgages because you owe the, the lender money. Uh, mechanics liens because you owe the mechanic money. Yeah, it makes sense. So it's a right to keep possession of property, right? Not maybe not the entire property, but a part of that property, to belonging to another person, obviously, until a debt owed by that person is discharged. That's beautiful. That's what it is. So that is how what a lien is and how it gets how you put a lien on a property is you need to have a usually a judgment for that amount and then you file it with the county clerk. But again, it's probably a lot easier or more difficult than other places. Not so easy here. The only liens that I've ever placed were ones where I had a judgment for the lien for the for the amount and then I put the lien on the property with the county clerk. That's really how it works. I hope this was helpful. Sometimes. Somehow I think it may or may not be, but whatever. If you are interested in all the ways that I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are interested in finding out more about a course I have that teaches how to do what I do, go to howtoflipnewyorkcourse.com. If you are interested in finding out more about one-on-one -on -one coaching that I provide to people, I just had a student, 19 years old, doing a second deal. We already did a deal. We're a $75,000 wholesale deal that we split. And we got another deal coming, which we are about to get at the contract. Awesome in Massapequa Park. Um, and he did this in five months, so my coaching works. I got another student who's just doing his first rehab now. He wanted to do a rehab, and he's going to make a fortune on it. He just started his work now. Um, but just a few examples of how great my students are doing. Now, uh, if you're interested in finding out more about coaching, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help me. And please keep the comments coming. I try to post five times a week. And I don't always know what the hell to talk about. So your comments help me by giving me topics. So just in general, you can ask any question on any topic. It doesn't have to be about the video you're watching. And if it's a simple answer, I'll just reply. If it's something I've covered in depth, I'll send you a link to videos or maybe multiple videos. And if it's a new topic, I will do a new video on it. So, uh, or, some, or maybe it's something I haven't covered in a while, I'll do a video on it. So if you want clarification, if you have any questions, I'm happy to help you. Please type in the comments below. And I cannot, cannot, cannot thank you enough 
for all the time all the new people that have subscribed and all the people watching all the hours watching uh watched i really appreciate it um i may even be able to monetize this channel which means show ads but not there yet but hopefully it will be but I, only because you've been watching and i really appreciate it thank you very very much oh there's a comment oh alfredo lopez says my course works thank you i'm just gonna thank it thank you very much oh, i didn't say thank you no 